Welcome to this service of Holy Communion here at St Margaret Lothbury, whether you're here in person or joining us online. And we hope that uh, those of you who are joining us online, whenever you see this, whatever, wherever you are, you will be able to feel part of what is happening in St Margaret's this afternoon. And it's great that I'm not just here alone today, which is wonderful. Thank you all for coming. So let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and to whom, whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, Spirit, that we may perfectly love, love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first command. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, Lord have, have mercy on us, us and, and incline our hearts to keep, keep this, law. this law. Let us pray. Almighty God, who hast given thine only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and an ensample of godly life, give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable benefit, and also daily endeavour ourselves to follow his blessed steps. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The epistle is written in the second chapter of the first epistle of Peter, beginning at the 19th verse. For this is trustworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongly, for what glory is it when ye be buffeted for your faults, and yet ye take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, and take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 11th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth not the wolf coming, and leaveth, and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this world, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Reading that Gospel passage today, we're reminded of something at the heart of our faith that we sometimes forget about or it moves to the edge of our mind. The Lord Jesus saying, I am the Good Shepherd, reminds us of how he must have been seen by those who were with him in those three years of his public ministry, those crowds that followed him, 
There are those that vast number of people who used to ask for more teaching from him. The curiosity at his authority and the amazement at his deeds. For the, uh, the word which is translated in our uh, gospel reading here as good is actually a much more powerful word than that. It speaks of generosity, it speaks of attractiveness, it speaks of someone who draws someone to him by the sheer quality of his character. And we don't know, of course, the Aramaic word that the Lord Jesus used when he first described himself in this way. But John, writing all those decades after the resurrection, looked back and realised what he was trying to get across to those who heard him that day. There is something remarkable about the Lord Jesus. And you and I need never lose that sense uh, as we turn to him in prayer or as we speak about him to our friends. And he doesn't leave it like that. He says exactly why this is the case. He communicates with us. He calls us by name. He doesn't see us as a group or as strangers or as people whose faces he recognised but whose names he's forgotten. He calls us by name. And he cares for us as well. That practical guarding that the shepherd does of the sheep, looking after them, keeping them safe, ensuring that they're not there open to any passing attack by a wolf. He communicates, he cares, and of course he laid down his life for the sheep, which is what this service is all about. In Jesus, we worship this attractive, this generous, this astonishing God uh, who has come to us and died for us. We can be excited and confident about our faith as a result. And so let your light so shine before all that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So Lord, we pray this water in the name of him out of whose side came both water and blood. Even Jesus Christ, thy son, our Lord. Amen. I wash my hands in innocence, even so shall I go to the altar the Lord. Purge me this, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be white in the snow. May these hands that have touched holy things be now and always acceptable in my sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In our prayers today, we continue to pray for Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family, for this City of London, and for all who work here, for all who work too in the National Health Service and the care sector, and for the vaccination programme. <coughs> We continue to pray in our own fellowship for Carrington and Moranti, for Dan Jarvis and his father, for Becky and for Laura. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church, Militant Kier, in Earth.
Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal Church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may, both by thy life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Remembering today Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. <coughs> Almighty God, Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ make all things, things judge of all men, acknowledge the way of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time as grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most just in thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our mistakes, the remembrance of the letters of the unto us, the burden of the letters and heart of Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please the immunity of God, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. No one comes to words, our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him, Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
For he is the very Paschal Lamb which was offered for us, and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we, we lord and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 holy. Lord, lord God, God of us, heaven and earth are full, full of thy glory. glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, lord Most High. Amen. Amen. We do not presume. Come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs on the light table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercies. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, say to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humble beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Oh, ah. Body of Christ. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And as you come forward, we invite you to uh, come uh, with socially distance and then return to your pews via that uh, way and round, and uh, we shall... Uh, in line with the guidance in the Church of England, uh, in tink to each of the wafers into the, um, into the chalice, and then I shall give it to you, uh, the body and blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Risen Lord Jesus, thou didst fill thy disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim thy risen life, and fill us with thy peace, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.